Hey everybody, we're gonna look at one of my favorite tips for using the session players. This is something that's built into Logic that's been there for a long time, but it allows us to create multiple regions which control the same session player. Let me explain how that works. We're gonna do that first with the drummer. I've actually created three drummer tracks, uh, except they're all the same one. And the way you do this, and I'm gonna do this with this piano one for a second towards the bottom. If you come up, you can use the keyboard shortcut or go to the menu, it says new track with same instrument. The reason why that's useful is because it means that this is the exact same track, just cloned out, but not just cloned, it's like the Borg, it's the same thing. If I click on solo, it does them both. Mute, it does it both. If I click on automation, it does them both. They're the same thing. However, when we go to the right of the track header, this becomes separate with the drums. And this is the example I wanna use first. I have two drummer tracks regions controlling this, the session region. The first one, I just have the snare turned on. The second one, just the kick turned on. And the first one, I have fills turned on, but the second one I have fills turned off. There will be a little overlap sometimes. For instance, in the fills, the kick sometimes comes in for the fills. But listen to how this is, and I'm going to, for a moment, mute this third region. But let's listen to the first one first. That's that, let's hear the second one. They're both controlling the exact same drum kit. That means if I change anything with the drum kit designer, with the kick or the snare, both of those regions are controlling the exact same one. Everybody hopefully follow me at this point. Um, because then they're doing half of the drum pattern each, let's play them together. But say I'm like, you know what, that snare, I want um, a lot less intensity and less complexity. Okay, so I'm changing all that and it's just changing the snare part of the pattern. The kick part, I can change completely separately. Normally, if we're doing the sliders, the complexity of the intensity, uh, then it's changing both of those things together. Right? And so now we're actually breaking things out even further than maybe they intended them to be. The other nice thing is I can come through with a third version of the exact same track and put a MIDI file on it, and then draw out any additional drums that I want to. And it's going to layer in with the other ones, again, triggering the exact same kit. This is not separate kits. So now we can do that like triple, quadruple, syncopated, overlaid kick drum that we've always wanted using MIDI. And um, in this case, the brush tool. Okay, that was ridiculous. But you get the idea. All three of those going to the exact same kit, all three of those interplaying with itself, all three of those the same instrument. Now, this I think is better. There's a lot of people talking right now about the next thing I want to briefly focus on, which is if you have for instance, in this case, the piano open, and you're playing along, listen to the chords. And you're like, man, I really wish that top note went a little higher, but I don't want to convert this all to MIDI. Well, you can push the piano roll button, the P on the keyboard, and it will flip over to MIDI. I think this is actually a bug. Let me explain why I think that. First of all, the manual doesn't say anything about it. 
Uh, it doesn't indicate that that's a feature. As far as I can tell, maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong and they found a place, but um, I, don't, I didn't see it. So, and let's move that right, ugh, right to there. Let's, let's take it to there, right? That's how it should have been played anyway. Um, let's close that down. It's still the session region here, right? It works like that with the drummer and the bass. It works like that with all of them for the moment. However, here's the thing. If you go in and make a bunch of changes like this, and then at some point you think, you know what? I really wish the complexity was just ever so higher. It gets rid of that note. The one that I drew in there is gone. It's like rewritten. So if you really want to make changes that stay and use the session functionality, then you can't really have both at this time. Once you get to a point when you're sure you're done with the session instruments capabilities, then just convert it to MIDI anyway. While it's cool to be able to push the P and see the MIDI that's in there, it doesn't really help you all that much because if you make any changes and then you change your session region, it's just going to uh, remove it. So at that point, converting it into the MIDI at the end makes the most sense. The other thing to keep in mind, this is eight bars long, um, we can convert this into pattern regions and it will just do multiple pattern regions. If you really want to be able to switch it out to something else that maybe is easier to notate, then the pattern regions are not a bad option. And you can see that the chord information is embedded in those as well. I think we're going to talk about the step sequencer in a separate video, but I really wanted to showcase this thing of using the same track to really create more complex information and data for the drummer to follow. Let me know if this is useful, if you want more like this, um, but I hope you're enjoying Logic 11.